is Dr. Saurabh Galagli in Monterey, California. I have a practice that focuses on endoscopic spine surgery, and I'd like to narrate my current technique for medial branch transection for painful facet joints. Facet joint pain is well known to the majority of patients and spine surgeons as a common and treatable cause of low back pain at the base of the lumbar spine and in certain instances in the cervical spine as well. There is a wealth of literature out there on the comparison between percutaneous dorsal rhizotomy as done by traditional pain management physicians and endoscopic medial branch transection with demonstrated improvements in both the efficacy of the procedure and in the duration of pain relief. If you'd like a recent well done review of the landscape surrounding these techniques, I recommend this article from the Journal of World Neurosurgery, which is available on my website at the link below where I keep a library of articles that I find particularly relevant to my practice as an endoscopic spine surgeon. This is a relatively typical graph from one of those comparison trials where endoscopic rhizotomy was compared to medial branch transection. In this chart, in this chart you'll see endoscopic rhizotomy in red and radial frequency ablation in blue. And generally what you'll see is that endoscopic rhizotomy is both more effective in terms of better achievement of greater than 50% improvement in pain relief and lasts longer over the duration of follow-up. And I personally believe that represents increased accuracy in the procedure and the ability to visually identify the medial branch of the dorsal ramus and transect it as opposed to applying radio frequency energy somewhere in the vicinity. Here's a relatively typical patient from one of my from my practice. Um, so this is a gentleman in his 80s with a history of a career in the National Football League who presents with enlarged facets at the L4-5 level. One would normally think this patient would be looking for a stenosis operation, but he has an unrestricted ability to walk and his pain is only on one side, in his case on the right side, and five to six centimeters off the midline and localizes perfectly to this area of facet enlargement. My personal technique is to perform an ultrasound guided facet block in clinic because in my own judgment, the response to the diagnostic block is the most predictive sign of improvement after an endoscopic rhizotomy. And I've taught myself the ability to localize the facets with the ultrasound and then inject two or three cc's of lidocaine in the area of the medial branch and repeat their examination. And if they report greater than 80% pain relief from that one diagnostic maneuver, I consider them to be a candidate for a dorsal, for an endoscopic medial branch transection. This is a couple of uh, slides that demonstrate the ultrasound technique. So here we have an ultrasound, a parasagittal ultrasound of the spine, demonstrating the L5S1, L4-5, and L3-4 facet complexes. And what I've done with this video is superimposed that parasagittal ultrasound view with a parasagittal CT scan, demonstrating the uh, anatomic landmarks with a radiographic technique that we are all more familiar with and convince you that if you start performing ultrasound guided transverse process blocks in the operating room and then confirming the placement of your needle with fluoroscopy, you can become quite comfortable with this technique, which is the way that I taught myself ultrasound guided facet blocks in the office. Once the block has been completed, or sorry, that's the, here's the transverse view of the, of the same, um, of the injection at the L45 level. You can see the needle on the left-hand side of your screen docking on the facet complex, and I call this the space shuttle sign. We are specifically looking for that intersection between the transverse process and the facet complex at the root of the wing of the space shuttle here, and with, with practice, you can uh, learn to identify that with greater than 90% accuracy, in my opinion. The anatomy here is extremely important, and I think this is what differentiates an endoscopic from a percutaneous technique. Each facet joint is innervated by the medial branch from the level above and the level below. So to anesthetize the L4-5 facet complex requires transecting the medial branch at the L4 transverse process and the L5 transverse process. And the key here is the ability to visualize endoscopically the mammalo accessory ligament, which is not a true ligament, but is a condensation of fascia from the paraspinous muscles that goes from the accessory process on the transverse process to the mammillary process on the facet complex. And the mammillary, sorry, the medial branch of the nerve dives underneath the ventral surface of that ligament 
and it's at its intersection with the ligament that it is most effectively visualized. So here we'll have um, here we have a uh, a 3D representation of the spine, and then we delete that and see the medial branch labeled MB diving underneath the mammalo accessory ligament, which is labeled MAL. This is what it looks like endoscopically, and in my opinion, this is the convincing sign that I've found the medial branch of the nerve. I like to see the V, and I've represented here the left side and the right side of the patient. So you can see that the V points towards the foot of the patient, and here is the medial branch diving underneath the mammal accessory ligament, beautifully demonstrated endoscopically. The technique for this procedure is relatively straightforward. If you're familiar with placing percutaneous pedicle screws or performing lumbar kyphoplasty, you'll understand that this is normally somewhere about a 45 or 30 degree approach angle to the intersection of the transverse process and the facet complex, but there's a relatively wide window of appropriate trajectories depending upon your particular preference. This is video filmed in we'll the operating room. We'll start at the L5 transverse process. So I'll make a sub one centimeter incision here, transverse in line with Longer's lines. And I'll use the switching stick here to slide through the fascia. Park this switching stick exactly on the midpoint of the transverse process and have fluoroscopy come in and confirm the x-ray here. Okay, so there we are exactly on the transverse process of five. And what I like about the switching stick is that I'm able to feel off the top and the bottom of the TP and hold it right there at the midpoint of the TP. You can back up the fluoro now, and now I'll take the cannula. So I'd like to confirm the placement of the initial dilator or switching stick on the transverse process, and I feel like I've become relatively adept at being able to feel those landmarks and make sure that that initial dilator is docked on the intersection of the transverse process and the facet complex. I'll confirm that with x-ray. I now at this stage in my um, evolution use an AP x-ray only, but in the beginning I do recommend uh, both AP and laterals. And here's a video of a medial branch transection where we'll zoom in on the 3D representation of the spine, switch to endoscope, and then here I am uh, dissecting the medial branch out from the surrounding soft tissues at the leading edge of the transverse process, putting a tractable nerve hook underneath the medial branch and then once that medial branch has been identified and localized, using a pair of scissors here to snip it. And once it's been snipped, I'll use the electrocautery device to shrink the bundles of the nerve root back so that the nerve is completely transected over a distance of about a centimeter. And it's really this step here, which I think is responsible for the improved efficacy and duration of the treatment because this is likely to be a much more sustained form of relief of that, uh, relief of pain from that nerve than radiofrequency uh, uh, energy somewhere in the area. This is what it looks like endoscopically. So this would be on the patient's left side. And here we see the nerve diving underneath the mammalo accessory ligament with the patient's head to the right, feet to the left, and the leading edge of the transverse process uh, visualizable. And here we're using a bipolar device to shrink the tissues out of the way and identify the nerve there in the center of the screen. There are anatomic variants in which the mammal accessory ligament is ossified. I think this prevents the percutaneous techniques from being successful and they're worth uh, noticing uh, during endoscopy. So here I'm putting a ball tip, retractable ball tip nerve hook endoscopically underneath the mammal accessory ligament and demonstrating its ossification and then visualizing the branches as they, um, as they are entering into the MAL. There is a lot of variation in the number of branches here and it's common for the nerve to be arborized. So it's incumbent upon you as an endoscopic spine surgeon to make sure that you develop familiarity with the uh, variations in anatomy and the ability to transect the appropriate portions of the nerve. Again, just revisiting uh, the anatomy that I think is crucial. So the goal here with the endoscope is to appreciate a to appreciate the fine microscopic level uh, detail of anatomy here, looking for this V and transecting the nerve as it dives underneath the mammal accessory ligament, since I think that relationship is really key to ensuring that you've identified the correct neurologic structure, in addition to both tactile and radiographic landmarks. 
The code that we use to describe this procedure is 64772, transection or avulsion of a spinal nerve in an extradural fashion. And if you look down there at the description of the code, you can see that that is typically used for posterior interosseous neurectomy or anterior interosseous neurectomy when performed on the wrist. And on the right-hand side is an article for the technique associated with those two procedures. You'll find that this nerve is almost exactly the same size and, again, is used for very, very similar purposes, which is for ablating an afferent nerve that is carrying pain signals from an arthritic joint to the brain and represents a relatively minimally invasive treatment option for patients with painful facet arthropathy. Thank you very much. Any questions, Don't please feel free to get in touch.